Welcome to video number 10 for Control Shift Enter Mastering Excel Array Formulas. Hey, I'm in the workbook array formula DVD book. Start on the sheet topics. Now, last video we talked all about some product function. In this video, we want to talk all about lookup function. Lookup like some products is one of those amazing functions that can do array calculations without Control Shift Enter. Now I'm going to click on this link 10 to jump to sheet number 10. And as I have been doing in the last few videos, I have a uh, bulleted list here of the topics we've covered in the first nine videos. This is kind of the uh, main concepts we've covered so far. All right, lookup function. Now, lookup function is the oldest lookup function in Excel. It's it was around before VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP. It was in the original VisiCalc spreadsheet. Now, lookup. Uh, it's quite interesting. There's two types of lookups. The first one is you have a lookup value and an array, but this array can either do vertical or horizontal. If the table is taller or equal to, it does vertical lookup, and it always takes the value from the last column and retrieves that value. So if you give it two columns, it takes from the second column. If you give it 10, it takes from the 10th column. If the table is wider than tall, it does horizontal lookup. Uh, now, this is lookup in an array. Notice there's no column or row number. It's always taken from the last column. There's also this other version that's totally amazing. You have a lookup value and a lookup vector, which lookup value finds something. The lookup vector determines the position and then retrieves something from a result vector. Now, I'm going to, in this video, talk about the array aspects of the lookup function, because lookup most of the array calculations we give it, it will be able to handle them no problem without Control Shift Enter. Now there's a link down here uh, to another video, Lookup. This is the name of the video, Lookup Function Beginner to Advanced 23 Examples. And there's the link. It's at YouTube. It covers all aspects of Lookup, not just the array aspects like we're going to look at in this video. All right, let's look at our first example. And guess what? Back in Video number five, we had this same setup. We did lookup adding. We had a data set we have uh, with transactions, right? And we have the prices, but we need the total cost also. And that didn't come with our data set. No problem. We built the sum ifs, the criteria argument. We gave the criteria argument more than one value. We gave it five values as criteria. That means the sum ifs will spit out five answers by doing what? Looking in the sum range right here, and there's the criteria range. Now, the, the nice thing about the sum ifs is it didn't matter whether this column was sorted or not. But here's the deal. If you can sort this first column, we can use lookup function, take advantage of the speed of approximate match lookup, and uh, we'll have a faster calculating formula. So I'm going to look at lookup. Right? We have three great examples for lookup, and we're going to look, see how array calculations could be done in each one of these arguments. So here's the lookup value. I'm simply going to highlight all these, just like with sum ifs, right? Sum ifs has the criteria argument. Here we have lookup. The fact that we're given this lookup value multiple items, it makes it an array calculation, that means the lookup will spit out multiple answers, five answers. Well, one, two, three, four, five answers, just as many lookup values as we give it. Now, I simply, I'm going to do the array part here. This table has more rows than columns, so it'll do vertical lookup. That first column must be sorted, though. All right, well, if I highlight this and hit the F9, boom, it returns multiple values. Now, we mentioned that the lookup function can do array calculations without Control Shift Enter, except for when the function ex itself is spitting out uh, multiple answers. Then you have to use Control Shift Enter. Uh, and we'll see that the array, uh, result vector, and lookup vector, those ones can handle array calculations when the function is delivering a single value without using Control Shift Enter. All right, so I can't, I could use sum and Control Shift Enter, but just like the uh, sum ifs example up here, I'm using sum product. It'll simply take that, those values, array of values created by the lookup, and add them. There we go. Now, 
I have some timing results to compare and contrast these. So I'm going to go look for the uh, lookup adding timing workbook, control O. And actually, when you uh, get the DVD, the timing formulas folder is the one you want to look in, and then look up adding. All right, so I took the sum ifs in this column here and the lookup, did some timing, uh, and then the lookup sum product was significantly faster. So if you were to go from using this to this formula, you would see significant decrease in calculation time. Now, as we mentioned before, it is worth timing your own formulas if you're concerned about huge array formulas slowing down your spreadsheet. Excel MVP Charles Williams has an absolutely amazing website, and you can download code to time your own formulas. This actually is a, inside of an article. There's the code. You download it, and you can time it. But this article is amazing about how to uh, speed up spreadsheet calculation time. All right, I'm going to close this workbook. Now, we just saw lookup value, an array calculation inside of that argument. Let's see another example. Actually, this is the same uh, ex similar example here, but maybe even a better use, right? We have you know, a huge column of sales, say, and we just want the total commission. Here's our commission table, right? So instead of putting an individual VLOOKUP, copying it down, and then totaling it, we can simply use some product lookup. The lookup value, I'm going to give it an array of values. As soon as we do that, we know lookup will spit out uh, an array of values, an array of answers. And then I'm going to use the array. Taller than wider. It looks it up here, approximate match only. This column must be sorted. It will retrieve something from there. And there we have it. Absolutely beautiful. All right. so. Definitely look up value, can uh, do some array calculations. Now let's see a couple of the other arguments. And these formulas will spit out a single answer, so we won't have to use Control Shift Enter or house them inside of some product. Here's the situation. We have some data, and this is mixed data. And we always want to be able to retrieve the last item. So right now, I should have a formula that gives me 45. If I put anything somewhere else in this column, it should get me the last item. Well, let's first do an array calculation to determine which cells have something in it. So I'm going to highlight the entire column. And I'm going to say anything in that not, that's the comparative operator, not, which is less than, greater than. And then double quote, that's a, a null text string that says, hey, is anything not empty? We should get a true, true, false, true, false, false. So when I highlight this and hit the F9, boom. there. The fourth position is the true that I'm interested in, because that's the last one. Now, if we're doing lookup, if we do approximate match lookup, and our lookup value is bigger than any number in the lookup array, it'll always get the last one. So check this out. I'm going to convert these to numbers. But only the numbers, uh, I only want the number 1. I don't want the 0 to show up for false, because that will mess up our trick, our ability to get the last number using approximate match. So watch this. To convert those trues and falses to 1's and zeros, I'm going to say 1 divided by. All right, And so what this does is that any math operation on trues and falses converts them to true 1's and zeros. But because we're doing divide by, Divide by 0 is an error, a divide by 0 error. So check out this array, F9. And there I have it. The 1's, which are numbers, right, represent something's in the cell. And the divide by 0's means uh, there's nothing there. And guess what? The lookup function will not be bothered by divide by 0 errors. It'll just see it if we use this as our lookup array. It'll just see us see it as potential things to look up. Now, the whole trick is going to be when we use lookup, approximate match. Anytime you give a lookup value bigger than any number in the array or lookup array, it will always get the last one. So there we go. Lookup value 2, we know this is going to be divide by zeros and 1. It will automatically keep looking until it can't find any more numbers and take the last number, Control Z. All right, now comma, comma. 
the result vector? Well, if I want these values here, I simply highlight it. And that is amazing. We are making an array calculation in the lookup vector. And I simply hit Enter. No Control Shift Enter. Boom, it works. If I put the word rad right here, it obeys and gets and looks up the last item. Now I'm going to Control Z. What if I wanted to look up not the actual data itself, but find the last data that has been entered and tell, look, at, look up the date? No problem. I'm going to copy that in edit mode. Edit mode, Control V. And I'm simply going to change the result vector to the dates. Control Enter. No curly brackets up there. That is absolutely beautiful. If I change this to rad, it's telling me rad happened on 12-1-2012. All right, now our last example. Let's see, so our last example is going to be from finance. And I, so, I don't want you to so much worry about the finance part of it, because this isn't a finance video. But there's a great calculation. And we will make this uh, uh, array calculation in the result vector. Now, in finance, it's all about cash flow. So you have these periods, time 0, spent uh, 200 million on a machine. And then these are all the caches we've recouped over the years. Over here is a cumulative cash flow column, which means there's still 95 million left to retrieve on this project. Now, in finance, you have a, a required rate of return. Net present value is, is the calculation to, to determine the value of this particular project. IRR gives you the internal uh, rate of return. But payback is simply tells you how long it takes to recoup your cash. So somewhere in this column between year two and three, we can see we got to zero, meaning we've recouped all of our cash. So the payback is this calculation. You would come up here and say, oh, well, I know it's between 2 and 3, so 2. And since I still have to recoup 30,000, and I get seven, I mean 30 million, and there's 70 million coming in during year 3, you simply compare for the fraction of a year, 30, compared to the total we bring in during the uh, uh, third year. Now, that calculation will tell us it took us uh, 2.43 years to retrieve our cash back. Now, for purpose of uh, thinking about how we would make an array calculation here, let's look at this. Notice uh, for any particular year, right, where we hit 0 in this column, we're going to take a cell from the first column, subtract a cell from the second column, and then offset down one and divide by. So if we want to actually look this number up, we can take this whole column minus this whole column divided by this co whole column, create an array of all the potential answers, and then look up 0 in this column. Now, look up only does approximate match, so that will work. This column is sorted smallest to biggest. So check this out. The lookup function, the lookup value is going to be 0. I'm going to look it up where? In here, comma. And the result vector, I'm simply going to take that whole column, subtracting this column, and dividing by this column right here. Now notice I had to offset down just a little bit so that um, I get, for any array calculation, whatever the cell is here, minus the cell, divided by the next one down. Now if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can see the last little bit here is divide by 0. Control Z. So I don't want my formula hanging out there. So I'm going to actually drag this up, which will create a different type of an error. It will be an NA error. If I hit F9, you can see it's NA. But I don't care, because that last one, that means all we never recouped our cash anyway. So that error is not going to affect us. Can you believe that amazing uh, array calculation in the result vector? Now, I actually. Uh, posted this question at the Mr. Excel message board. And Barry Houdini came up with this bit of amazing Excel magic. All right, so if I Control Enter, I don't have to Control Shift Enter. Boom, you can see no curly brackets up there. And check this out. If I were to change this to 10, 
net present value works perfect. IRR and this amazing array calculation works perfectly. That's given me the correct number, right? Because now it's between 3 and 4. So 3 plus 15 divided by 30 is 3.5. This formula is not, uh, is not going to update as our formula inputs update, but this amazing formula will. Now I'm going to actually add one if here, because if there, if we never recoup all of our cash, I want to see the word never. So you say if, and I'm going to sum all of the uh, cash coming in, hopefully. If all of those are never going to be greater than, so less than, and this is a negative, so I have to put a negative. So if all the sum of all the cash flows coming in over the six years are less than the initial cost, that's the logical test, then the value, if true, never. <laughs> Otherwise, the value of false will be that lookup. And let's test it. What if we had all ones? The net present value, the IRR, are all working fine. You can see this payback isn't working at all, but this one is working just fine. Control-Z. We change this to 65, and we get boom. All right, so we saw lookup function in this video. We could do array calculations in the result vector. We can do array calculations in the uh, lookup vector. By the way, this is another one of the amazing formulas I learned from the Mr. Excel message board. Uh, just an amazing place. Uh, that's basically, as I told you in the first video, where I learned everything about array formulas. And we also saw that we could do array calculations in the uh, lookup value. So that's a lot about lookup. In our next video, video 11, we'll see two more functions that handle array calculations without Control-Shift-Enter. We'll see aggregate and index. All right, see you next video.